going to be sharing your hands and I'll share the comments later. So. How many of you here, uh, Joanne, how many of you learn by seeing? Learn by seeing. How many learn by seeing? Seeing someone do it, so you learn by doing it that way. Wow. <laughs> I know that when I want to learn someone, if someone, you know, wants to teach me something, and make sure you get my attention, because guess what? <laughs> I learn better if they show me how to do it, so that I can follow their example. For me, it's difficult sometimes to visualize what someone else is talking about. Even though I have that imagination of my own. Sometimes it's difficult to visualize. You need to do this, this, this. So please show me. <laughs> the way I envision may be completely different from the way that someone else is envisioning what they want done. So, so you know, I, I may have like a completely different idea than what they intended. So the best way for someone to show me is to show me <laughs> how to do something. Okay? Remember that. Don't forget that. Okay, guys? <laughs> the monkeys in the zoo. It reminds me of the monkeys in the zoo, okay? I mean, they, they show us the visual effects on others. When someone's like standing in front of their enclosure, you know, they make gestures and they do this and faces and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, the monkeys start doing the same thing, you know? I guess that's where we got that monkey see, monkey do thing. That, that, um, that whole saying. <laughs> we as Christians, we've been in having a steamed job. Yes, we do. As Christ ambassadors. Let me repeat that again. We have an esteemed job description because we are Christ's ambassadors to the world. We are called to be the image of Jesus in the world. There are many out there, you know, who are watching us, not just to point a finger, but they're looking for a good example for their lives. But at times, we fall short of that example. We, we, we do that, right? Instead of leading people to Jesus, well, sometimes we unfortunately chase people from Jesus. What does God want us to be? What does he want us to show the world in which we live in? Are we really supposed to be that visual for the world around us? If so, what does that visual look like? What is it supposed to be? What, what, what would it look like if we were that example that the world is needing so desperately? God's promises and his truths can be hard to understand if we don't realize, if we do not know who we are, who you are, who I am, you know, who Cecily is, who Sharon is, who, who, who Terry is, who, who we are in Christ. How can we understand his truths that he has for us? Who are we really? How does God equip us and what are we supposed to do anyway? We've begun to look at who we are in Christ. We've begun a deep journey into these questions and so many more. I truly believe that we all want to be the you that God wants you to be. I believe that in my heart. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Let's see what transformation happens as we become who God says we are and not what the world outside thinks that we should be. Amen? What can happen? On our journey, we've discovered one fact. You and I are God's beloved. You and I are cherished, favored, and loved by God. 
even in this world of rejection and then of exclusiveness, there is one who will never reject us. Applause and all. Amen. <laughs> no matter how far we may fall. We have gone to the river with Jesus and we remembered our baptism and the promises that are found there. We are striving to live a life of acceptance and grace so that we can extend that same acceptance and grace to those who are out there lost and alone and needing a Savior. We talked about the different names that we go by and how we're identified we are the beloved of God. That's one name we can go by. We are the beloved of God only if we choose and believe. We also are honored to bear in Christ's name in the name that we call ourselves. Remember, the first part of Christians is Christ. We bear his name. We are called by God to an extraordinary purpose, whether you believe it or not, because it's extraordinary because only you or you or you or, 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 or somebody, just only you can fill that purpose, no matter what. Other people can come along and try to you know, do that purpose. Guess what? It's not going to work because it was made for you. Just got to find it. We need to find that niche, that purpose, as we pray, God's kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so, as we find our niche, our purpose, and fulfill it, we are setting an example for others. Yes, you and I are wonderful examples of the love of God outside that world, that loveless world in which we live. We matter in the lives of others. I'm going to repeat that. Did somebody need to hear this, okay? We matter. We make a difference in the lives of other people. When we say yes to God, we also say yes to his calling that he has on our lives. And to live in a more excellent way to show others the love and the mercy and the grace of God. Amen? Yes, we live for that. You know, he hasn't said anything to it, right? The scriptures that I have read this morning are all about how, how we show an example to those monkeys to see and go and do likewise. Let's look at the Psalms for this morning, Psalm 15. The first um, one, it says, Who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? When we walk blameless, we do what's right to and for those around us, we set that example for them to see. When we speak the truth in love and watch our words to and about others, we become a shining example of God's love. When we act justly to and for others, the monkeys that are watching will want to be like what the monkeys are doing, right? They now know what it looks like. So now they too you know, can become the same way. They have had their example. Now it is their choice to be an example or not to be an example. In the Matthew that I just read, 
We hear all about what it looks like to be whom God wants us to be. Other than just plain copying, but being a monkey for Jesus. This is a piece of scripture I try to let direct my actions in my life. It is who we're supposed to be. This is like a job description of what it would look like if we were totally sold out for Jesus. I consider myself a sold out chick for Jesus. I don't know how it looks like too. <laughs> sold out chick for Jesus. This is what it looks like. <coughs> we are poor in spirit. What does that mean to be poor in spirit? What does that mean? We're not haughty. We're not stuck up. We're not like, well, we're better than you. I'm better than anybody else. We don't think too highly of ourselves when we are poor in spirit. When we mourn, what is it to mourn? When we trust God with our life and with the lives that are dear to us, we show others how to give their life We are meek. <laughs> Revisit one. <laughs> we are meek. We are gentle. We're not, you know, in people's faces. In your face, girl. We're not in people's faces. We're meek. We're mild. We're loving in all that we do and all that we say. We thirst and hunger for righteousness. We look after others. We care about others. We decide that others are above us and not below us. We fight for others' freedoms, no matter what that looks like. No matter what that looks like. It doesn't matter. We fight for the oppressed, for the you know, orphans and the widows, wherever they stand. We are merciful. When others offend us, we are merciful. We are given mercy, so we show mercy as we become the image of Jesus, the one who showed mercy to the point to stretch his arms out on a cross so that we may be redeemed from God. Be a pure in heart. What does that look like? Are our hearts pure or are they defiled with, with anger and deceit, conceit and, and you know, fill the blank? Are we filled with the world inside? Or are we filled with God inside? We are persecuted. How do we act more persecuted? That's important. Do we show three, me, <laughs> one poor in spirit, three merciful? Are we pure in heart? How do we react when we are under persecution? Are we showing an example of God or an example of the world? We have two choices. That being persecuted, right? How are we going to be? When we are peacemakers, well, this is pretty, you know, explanatory, right? I'll have to explain that one. We are peacemakers. Don't start from We are in peace. We are insulted. Mm. That is a hard one. When we are insulted, how do we act? Do we act gladly? Or do we act boldly? Micah 6 asks us this question. I like Micah. How can people read Micah? Micah 6. What does the Lord 
Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of me? It's Micah 6. I'm going to go to verses 6 through 8. Right after Job. Micah 6. 6 through 8. What shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams and ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. How do we walk humbly with our God? How do we even know what our God wants us to do? As I told the kids this morning. This is how we walk home. This is how we love justice. This is how we love others. As we meditate on God's word. Who are you? Example, are you giving those who are looking to see what you do so that they can do it too? A shining example or one clouded by the world around you? What is the Lord requiring you to do? He to do. He's always requiring something. What is he requiring us to do? Are you willing to be the you that God wants you to be. Trust. Are you willing to be that person? Are you willing to become you? We are called to be the mirror image of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So the mirror here. We are called to be the mirror image of Jesus Christ. We're not called to become, become Jesus Christ. We are called to become his image in the world. A world who can't see him except through us and who we are. You are an ambassador. You, everyone in this mirror, is an ambassador. What image are you going to show the world around you? What are you going to be? How are you and I showing the example? And what for example are we showing the world? Our world loves to copy the latest and greatest thing, doesn't it? Are we being a new trend or are we showing them an ancient way? A more excellent way? To help ourselves and others find their way to honest heart, to God's heart. What is the Lord requiring from you? And what is he requiring? Thank you.